Hey guys, welcome back to another Let's Draw, and today we are going to be making an artwork inspired by the Ndebele Painted Houses. The Ndebele are a group that live in South Africa, and they're famous for their brightly painted houses and their beadwork. The tradition of painting these houses is passed down from generation to generation, so they've been doing it for a very long time. The houses were traditionally made with mud bricks and then painted with natural materials. But in the present day, with commercial paints, they're able to use a lot of bright colors. The designs for the Ndebele painted houses usually have a white background so that the colors and the geometric patterns are able to pop out. One of the Indebele artists that is really well known is Francina Indimande. She has painted many houses and does a lot of beautiful beadwork. She has a lot of paintings that she sells that are similar to the designs that she would paint on houses. She says that she doesn't plan any of her designs out. She just thinks them up in her head and paints directly from her imagination. And something else that I thought was really impressive is that she doesn't use a ruler for her designs. She's able to make those really straight lines with just a lot of practice and patience. I thought the way they painted the houses were so beautiful, so I wanted to make a project that was inspired by these artists. So for today's project, you are going to be drawing an animal from Africa. It could be any African animal. But then we're going to create a frame using patterns very similar to the Ndebele painted houses. So I'm going to show you how to make your straight lines and kind of section it off. And then you are going to probably take the most time actually on the frame, adding the patterns and designs. As for your animal, like I said, you can pick any African animal. However, I do have three videos on my channel of different African animals if you need a guide for you. I have one for this cheetah, an elephant, and a giraffe. But again, there are so many African animals, so you can really pick any one that you want. So for this one, if you have a ruler, go and grab it, because it will help you with the sides at least. And then get all of your colors so you can make your colorful border. And maybe have something that you can look up pictures of African animals on too for your drawing in the middle. And then let's get started. All right, you guys, so for our Indabelle project, we're actually going to start with our border first, and usually when you are working on a project, that's kind of the last thing you think about, but we're going to think about that first because we want to be inspired by those patterns and designs. So don't worry about what animal you're going to put in the middle for right now. We're going to make our border. So I really recommend a ruler if you have one. If you don't have a ruler, you could use the edge of a book. Um, the edge of a folder, something that has a straight edge on the side because it'll just help you make a nice straight line. So what I'm gonna do with my ruler because it's kind of the perfect size for the border, I'm just gonna very carefully line it up with the edge of my white paper and making sure that it's lined up all along the side. I'm just gonna make a straight line that goes up and down for one side, and then I'm going to do that for all four sides. And I have a nice border already. I did leave these lines crossing because those are just going to be boxes that we fill in with designs anyway, so it didn't really need to be um, erased. Now if you are making your straight lines, and if you make them all crooked and crazy and your border is not even all along the outside, slow down a little bit and just take your time. That's why a ruler is really helpful because you can kind of see how much space there is. But no matter what you're using, just take your time to try to get the lines going straight up and down instead of at an angle. Now that we have the border set up, we're going to divide it into some different boxes. So on my original one, I kind of did boxes with a little space in between each one. You could just do boxes that are all the same size. Um, I think I'm going to kind of do similar to what I already did. So I'm going to leave a little space between the box and the corner. And I'm going to draw a line on this side and a line on this side. And then I'm going to move up and I'm going to think this looks like it's about the same size as that one. So I'm going to make my boxes all about the same. 
you could actually measure them, which would be awesome, but you don't have to, you can just eyeball it. Now I'm gonna go up and try to make them all about the same. All right, and one thing I did notice is that, look, I have this little space down here and this big one up here. I can't really do much about it since I did it in marker, so I'm just gonna leave it and that's fine. But it's a good reason to always do things in pencil so you can fix if you need to. Now I'm gonna do the same going across. If you don't use a ruler, your lines are definitely going to be a little bit shaky. And if you just don't have anything you can use, that's fine. But if you do, you should take the time to go find that because it really will make a big difference in how your project looks. All right, I think I'm gonna leave these two big spaces because those are fine, I can add designs to them. And now what you're going to do is really take your time and add lots of different shapes, patterns, and designs to each of these little sections inside the frame. Something to think about is how in the Indabelle artists would leave lots of white spaces. So you don't need to completely fill these up with tons and tons and tons of colors and designs, but you want to take your time and maybe make at least every other space have a more intricate pattern, which means more detail, and then maybe the other ones in between could be more plain. For example, on my little tiny ones, I just did some straight lines like this on my original. And then I left the other boxes to be more detailed. I also tried to make sure that my boxes that are across from each other have the same pattern just because I thought it looked nice, but it's not necessary to do it that way. I am going to leave a bunch of examples all around for you, and you can also make up your own patterns too. All right, and I'm all finished with my border. And the rest of the drawing then is coloring in your border. Remember to leave white spaces because that will help make your pattern stand out and look interesting. And then drawing your choice of an African animal in the middle. I have a few videos on my channel for a giraffe, an elephant, and a cheetah that you could follow if you need some step-by-step -step guidelines. Or you can look up pictures of African animals and pick one and put it in the middle. It could be up close or it could be far away. It's kind of up to you. But when you're all finished, it might look something like this. So see on this one with the cheetah, I did marker all along the border and left some white spaces and the patterns really stand out. And then I did a close up of a cheetah and colored it in with crayons. So it stands out really nice from the border and you get to see lots of details in both. And I think that this project is just really fun because you get to be very creative with how it ends up. All right guys, well I hope you had fun making your Ndeble painted house inspired African animal portraits today. I think it's kind of fun to make a drawing where the frame is actually the most detailed and the most interesting part. And then it makes the stuff in the middle just look a lot more fun because it has this cool border. 
So hopefully you took your time on the border and had fun with this one and you were really creative. And I will see you guys next time for our next drawing video. Bye!